Welcome back to Defenders of the Last Stand. It's Midnight Pearl's turn. We have the Lightning of the Ancients now, which means we can do a lot of blasting on the map against raiders and or the leaders as well. So uh, Midnight Pearl is just off the board here. We're going to zoom down on her for a second. Let's take a quick look at her player board, see what she's got going on, and then we're going to get into her turn for this episode. All right, so we'll take a look at her cards here in a minute. She's got three Karma tokens, and of course, to fire the Lightning of the Ancients, we need to use one Action token. She has seven, of course, and a Karma token. She can fire it three times. This is really cool. She's got the Toolkit, which lets her uh, re-roll on tech checks. She's got Dynamite. She can blow some stuff up. Uh, if we want, she's got a Supply Run mission. Uh, we're not going to go through too many details here. We've gone over this before. And she has a mutation, which is radiation resistance. She gets to roll one more die on radiation checks, where she rolls two. Now she rolls three, but she has the mutation resistance, which allows her to spend a karma and just say, nope, don't want that mutation at all. And she has sabotage camps. She doesn't have that card anymore. A deadly blade. She gets to roll one extra die against... Uh, raiders, but not monstrosities or leaders. All right, back to the board. She has seven actions, and let's see what she wants to do. All right, we have a bit of a cunning plan. She's sitting over here in the old mine. Uh, I think the first, of course, we have these tokens. We do now have the Lightning of the Ancients. We don't need to do these tokens anymore, but these tokens are really valuable. There's some really cool stuff you can get by exploring these, doing these, uh, digging up these uh, adventure tokens. So... Let's go ahead for her first action. She's going to move down here to Mist City. Six actions remaining. For one more action, she's going to attack the two techie mobsters. And because she has Deadly Blade, she gets to add one extra die. So with two techies, we get to roll three dice. Hitting on for techies, it's only a three plus. So let's see if we can wipe these guys out so that we can do some sal uh, salvaging here. Maybe. Uh, oh, wow. Those deadly blades were very deadly. That's absolutely wiped out the two techie mob dudes. Excellent. That was her second action. For her third action, you know what we're going to do? We are going to uh, go ahead and see if we can scavenge this. She has a scavenge ability of four. She'll be rolling four dice, uh, succeeding on a five or six. And yes, my camera battery all of a sudden decides that it is packing it in. So, we're going to come right back, get out the dice tray, and see what she can do about uh, scavenging in Mist City. All right, so let's get out the dice tray and see if she can salvage four dice. Needs a five or six to go ahead and succeed. Otherwise, that token just gets dumped off the board. Been, ooh, two fives. All right, so she succeeds quite easily with salvaging. And what does she get for the salvage token? A unique artifact and gated defender's card. Excellent. She needs more cards. She's very low, which we didn't look at. So uh, once we get this defender's card, we're going to look at her cards. So she gets another motorcycle. Bama. We'll take a look at her cards here in a minute. But she gets a unique artifact, which is so cool. So let's grab a unique artifact. She got the missile launcher last time. What does she get this time? She gets some high octane fuel. Discard a defender card with a motorcycle to move three spaces after each use roll a d6. If you roll a one, discard this card. Ah, right on. So her motorcycle cards now allow her to move three spaces instead of two. I like that ability. That is really cool. Speaking of motorcycles, she has now six cards, two motorcycles, a shield, a couple grenades. I misspoke about the grenades. I said if you have two grenades, you can destroy it, oil and ammo depot. What you do with the grenades is every grenade symbol card you discard, you get two dice. Uh, so if you discard two grenade cards, you have four dice, one is two, three would be six uh, dice. And every five or six is a success to blow up the oil and ammo depots. So that's how that works. I think I misspoke about that quite a few times. So uh, if we get to blowing up oil and ammo depots, that's how that's gonna work. All right, that was her third action. Uh, and now, Wow, now you know what? Because she has that special ability with her high octane fuel, she is going to spend that card she just got, the motorcycle card, and bomb right across the land uh, at three spaces on a motorcycle. So one, two, three. Can't quite see. She's at Devil's Junction. We're going to readjust the camera here. Uh, that's exactly where we want her to be. So that was her fourth action. Let's readjust the camera. I think she might now 
fire off the lightning of the ancients. All right, she has three actions remaining. She's sitting here at Devil's Junction with an oil ammo depot. Uh, let's revisit the um, ancient artifact as to what we can do. So if she spends a karma token, she's got three, and a action token, uh, you can either attack raiders in your location. There aren't any. A monstrosity leader. Uh, and these are all adjacent, I do believe. Raiders spend one action to have a weapon uh, target those blow that is on a location adjacent to the ranger. I do not believe adjacency means across solid lines, but the dotted lines for sure. Uh, oh darn it, that's not. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're gonna um, we're gonna have to look up that up. Resolution of the attack depends on. So we are going to attack a leader. I roll three dice and reduce a leader's health by one for each die of five plus. The way she's been rolling, I think she might have some pretty good luck. She is adjacent here to Bama. Bama's got four health left. Now, remember, you cannot reduce a leader's health through any to, down to zero except by direct confrontation. But we can certainly knock two hit points off him if she rolls well enough to do it. So, she's going to spend a karma token. Like I said, she has three. Now she's got two. An action token, which will give her two remaining. Oh, and I forgot to roll on the high octane fuel because she did move three spaces. If we roll a one, she's going to lose the high octane fuel. Don't roll a one. She rolls a six. Oh, no. A can was very full. Um, so, yes, we're going to see if we can knock Bama down. A couple of health points would be excellent. Then he'd be much more, much easier to take out. So, we're going to roll three dice. Any five or six will take one hit point off Bama. Well, using the lightning of the agent, so I guess it's like a giant satellite zapping <laughs> weapon. Let's see what happens. A six. Okay, well, you know, we do knock one health off Bama. He's going from four health, he drops himself down to three. So that was, a I guess, a pretty good use of the zapper. I am going to check the rule book on adjacency. This is a solid line against puke. Because uh, I kind of wanted to hit Bama once with the Lightning of the Ancients, and then we could have gone ahead and hit Puke. But if you can't go across a solid line considered adjacency, ah, it's a tricky question. Because I guess it's sort of adjacent, but you have to fly over it. I don't know. Let me check the rule book. She's got two actions remaining. I'm going to see if I can find a clarification for that. And we're going to come right back. She's either... If it isn't adjacent, then she, of course she won't be attacking Puke. If it is adjacent, she will. Otherwise, she's got other things, of course, that she can do. All right, we're going to take a look in the rule book. I do believe uh, this answers the question. Uh, so if we look here in the rule book, it says lined and broken borders. It says each location is divided by lines separating it from adjacent locations. And that's uh, either... They are solid lines or dotted lines, lined and broken. And I guess if it's lined or broken line, they're considered adjacent. So, that's how I'm ruling it. That's how I believe that should work. Uh, you just can't travel across it unless you use the hang glider or have a special ability. But, Devil's Junction apparently is adjacent to White Crater. So, we can go ahead and fire the lightning in the Ancients at Puke. Uh, so, we're going to go ahead and do that. She has two Karma Tokens remaining. Now, she has one... We're going to spend her second to last action attacking Puke with the Lightning of the Ancients. So I think we can get the dice tree and everything in here. I know we're kind of, I probably should zoom in a little bit. Actually, let's do that. Let's zoom in. All right, it's just a little bit easier to see the dice rolls and what's happening. So we got Puke. We're zapping him with the Lightning of the Ancients. He is sitting at a nice, healthy six hit points. Let's see if we can knock a couple or maybe three of them off there. Again, five or six, I believe. Uh, will reduce his health by one. Come on, lightning! Oh my goodness, Puke is one slippery little bugger. Uh, he, he dodges the entire attack. Uh, oh well, is what it is. I mean, we could do it again. She has one karma token remaining. But I think we are not going to do that. I think with her final action, we've not done this yet in the playthrough, she's going to go ahead and attack this oil and ammo depot because you can get two of these cards if you succeed. So I think she's going to spend uh, one crank grenade card for two dice. Hmm, that might not be enough. 
but oh i mean we could spend both grenade cards and roll four dice but let's go ahead I'm just going to roll two dice we need a five or six to blow that thing sky high and let's see if we can come on oh my goodness yep a well-placed grenade now why couldn't we roll like that against puke so we did manage to blow up this oil and ammo depot so let me get out the rule book because there's a few things you can do when you blow up an oil and ammo depot that was our last action let's check them out all right, let us consult the book. So uh, basically you needed to roll, this is attacking an oil and ammo depot. You needed a five plus, uh, so it tells you here, if you discard a grenade, you get two dice to the attack. A five plus is a success and then you die, which we did. So let's look at our victory reward here. When you destroy one or more oil and ammo depot, either gain a special card, two defender cards, or a karma token. Oh, what a rough choice. Um. But, you know, I think because Midnight Pearl is so low on, on uh, defender cards, and we ultimately need these to roll dice against taking out leaders, I think we're going to go ahead and she's going to get two defender cards for taking out that oil and ammo depot. Remember, we get all the oil and ammo depots on the board. We also lose the game, so it's good to get rid of them. She gets a couple crank cards, gas mask, oh, and a double a gun symbol which she can then use to sabotage leaders, which is awesome. So this is what her hand looks like now. Of course, it's the end of her actions. So we're going to get into the end turn, which means she's going to grab two more Raider cards, <coughs> sorry, Defender cards, and we're going to process a Raider card. All right, so try to get most of the board in as we process this. So she's going to get two more Defender cards, which is good. So boom, it's the end of our turn. Another, oh, another grenade, another gas mask, a couple... Bombas, Brambas. Uh, so this is her hand now. Not looking too bad. Two, four, six. We have, she has eight cards total. Of course, you can have a hand size of 12. That's what she's going to end up with at the end of this. But now, of course, the lovely Raider card must be processed. And let's see how nasty this one is going to be. Oh, wow. That's a lot of doubles. Stink Hills Tombstone, number six. Oh, man. It's just, you can't quite see it is getting two Earth Hurt War Parties. Hi, hi, not a good scene. Let's zoom up there and process that. Well, that kind of sucks a lot. Uh, so, instead of being able to place two here, we can only place a third and we would place another one, which causes an overrun. And when you get an overrun, this is not good. You get an oil and ammo depot and every adjacent space that's not bordered by a solid line <clears throat> gets a raider that did the overrun. So <clears throat> the U.S. Air Base will get one Earther War Party, and Auntie Saloon will get an Earther War Party, but it can't because there's already three there. So you know what happens there? Yep, another oil and ammo depot gets built right there. Jeez. Okay, there's a solid line between Stink Hills and Liberty Tunnel, so this one will not get one. However, Death Maze City which really sucks actually <laughs> it's going to get an earth or war party but we have frank's trap there so whenever raiders show up here the trap is going to spring and there's an immediate attack so frank's trap token springs and can we get that oh yeah that's in there no problem so we're going to be attacking the earth or war party with the trap so earth or war parties we need a four plus to take them out and the trap does not take out the one Earth or War Party, but the trap's gone. Ugh, I didn't want the trap to spring that way, but it did. All right, we're not finished processing that card yet. That was just the first kick in the face. Let's take a look at the rest of it. Oh, and I should say there's no multiple overruns. It's just you get an oil am ammo depot. So this wouldn't have overrun to other sections if you follow the logic. All right, I'm pretty sure that's how that works. All right, oh man, on to the second part. Um, last stop, Wishbone Pass, number 10, which is right, oh no, that's 16, where the heck is 10? Let's hope we don't get a run, oh, Wishbone Pass is right here. It's going to get two more Road Rage Rider uh, Wrecking Crew guys, so we get, now there's a total of three there. Oh boy, that's not good either. Now let's see what else we've got for this card. Um... But Bama just advances to the next location, period. So he's just motoring his way to Devil's Junction with... Oh, this guy stays there. But he does get one more uh, dude showing up with him. That is not good. 
And this battery is now dying as well. Techie scavengers. For each location with at least one of these token and no techie gangs. <sighs> Let me reprocess this once I change my battery. Oh man, this is... Uh, we might have to readjust the camera as well for certain locations. Alright, be right back. Okay, here we are. So, two... Oh, wow, this is an awful card. This should... I wish it was Frank's turn, because then he could have bounced it. But anyway, we can't do it. So, basically, Techie Scav, for each location with at least one uh, or, uh, scavenge token, and no Techie Gangs, place a Techie Gang. <sighs> we have three locations on the board that fit that bill. And that really sucks, because that then is going to add three individual Techie Mobs to the board. So, let's take a look. So over here in Joey Died here, we have two Earth or War parties, a scavenge token, but we do not have any techies. So the techies show up here to try and I guess they're rooting around for whatever uh, goods they can find for Crank. So we get one there, no overrun, thank goodness. The next place is over here in Madman Villa. There's a token. There's no techie war party or techie mob. Now there is. He's searching there as well. And finally, up here at the U.S. Air Base, there's only one Earther War Party. Just overran. Techie's going to show up there too, looking for stuff. That's with the only three tokens on the board. Uh, scavenge tokens left. We did a good job so far of getting rid of the rest of them, or in scavenging them. However, we did get those Techie. We have a uh, we have a problem now on the board, <laughs> it looks like. And of course, in our next episode, Frank is going to be showing up. And he's got a Karma token, one trap... Uh, token left and six and seven actions of course and a ton of cards all right so i think we're going to leave it off here for today so we have at devil's junction now we have uh midnight pearls made our way there bomb is sneaking his way up to last stand of course we if any leader gets the last stand you lose the game um and where is our frank is frank is hanging around way down here at the cacti forest just to the bottom of the screen It'll be his turn next episode. So thanks so much for watching along. Thanks for your comments, subscriptions, and likes. This is Defenders of the Last Stand. We have the Lightning of the Ancients. And honestly, didn't do a heck of a lot this turn, did it? We used it twice. Only took one hit point off Bama, and that was it. However, he's moving up the track. So we only have three hit points. We probably can take him out when we need to. All right, thanks so much. I'll see you as soon as possible. I'm trying to get these episodes up when I can which is not happening uh, as quickly as I'd like. I hope you're enjoying the series. I really do like this game. It's pretty fun. Of course, we have to defeat all four leaders. We're a long way from that yet, and we've got a lot of uh, raiders populating the board. We have a lot of locations with three raiders on it now, and that's not good. So thanks so much, and we'll see you soon for the next episode of Defenders of the Last Stand, Lightning of the Ancients.